Have you ever wondered how the wind changes direction or how the water swirls in a river? The world around us is in constant motion and understanding fluid dynamics is key to deciphering these phenomena. This intriguing field of study is not just about observing nature's whims, but it's an essential part of our everyday life. From the blood coursing through our veins to the weather patterns forming in the sky, fluid dynamics plays a vital role. Enter the Navier-Stokes equations, a fundamental system of partial differential equations named after Claude Louis Navier and George Gabriel Stokes, who formulated them in the 19th century. These equations are a major milestone in fluid mechanics and mathematical physics, describing how the velocity of a fluid changes over time and space, considering the fluid's viscosity and the applied forces. Whether it's engineering, meteorology, aerodynamics, oceanography, or even biology, the Navier-Stokes equations find a place everywhere, so let's dive into the Navier-Stokes equations, the mathematical language of fluid motion. The Navier-Stokes equations might seem complex at a glance, but they are simply a representation of Newton's second law applied to fluid motion. To understand these equations, we need to break them down into their main components, the velocity field, the pressure field, the fluid density, and the fluid viscosity. The velocity field can be thought of as a map that describes the speed and direction of the fluid at every point. Imagine a river flowing. The current is faster in the middle and slower near the banks. This variation in speed and direction is what the velocity field captures. Next, we have the pressure field, which represents the force exerted by the fluid on its surroundings. Picture the water pressure you feel when you dive deep into a pool. That's the pressure field at work. It's the force that the fluid imparts on any surface it comes into contact with, including the walls of a container or the surface of an object submerged in the fluid. Now let's talk about fluid density. This is a measure of how much mass a fluid has in a given volume. Think about the difference between oil and water. Oil is less dense than water, which is why it floats on top. The fluid density plays a crucial role in determining how a fluid will flow and interact with other substances. Finally, we have the fluid viscosity, which is essentially a measure of a fluid's resistance to shear or flow. It's the reason honey flows more slowly than water. The higher the viscosity, the slower a fluid tends to flow. Together, these four components, the velocity field, the pressure field, the fluid density and the fluid viscosity form the backbone of the Navier-Stokes equations. By understanding these components, we can begin to understand the equations themselves. It's fascinating, isn't it? These equations encapsulate the essence of fluid motion and give us the tools to predict how fluids will behave under different conditions. So, what have we learned from our exploration of the Navier-Stokes equations? Well, we've discovered that these intricate mathematical expressions conceived in the 19th century by Claude Louis Navier and George Gabriel Stokes are the cornerstone of fluid mechanics. They depict how a fluid's velocity alters over time and space, taking into account the fluid's viscosity and the forces exerted upon it. These equations are far from being confined to the dusty shelves of mathematical physics. They're instrumental in envisioning a broad spectrum of fluid phenomena such as fluid flow in pipes, vortices, waves, and atmospheric currents. Fields as diverse as engineering, meteorology, aerodynamics, oceanography, and even biology leverage the Navier-Stokes equations to understand and predict the behavior of fluids, whether it's the air we breathe, the water in our oceans, or biological fluids in our bodies. The next time you see a swirling river or feel the wind change direction, remember the Navier-Stokes equations the mathematical keys to the mysteries of fluid motion.